If you have a chat with some Nigerians living in different states, they will regale you with tales of long queues, stress, bribery, and corruption at NIN registration centers. It's not a sweet experience, but right now, most people don't have a choice. By December 15, 2020, the Nigerian Communications Commission ordered all mobile subscribers to link their national identification number, the NINs, to their subscriber identification models, the SIM cards. People without NINs will quickly register or risk being blocked by December 30, 2021. At the time of this order, there were 207 million mobile subscribers and 47 million registered NINs. But it did not start there. Though it seems sudden, the minister had already given the order with the same deadline since February 2020. He even added then that people should not link more than three SIMs. We hope we've heard the last of that though. But Nigerians were always going to have a hard time meeting up with the requirements between February 2020 and December 2020. Why? We've been trying and failing at this for the last 13 years. When the pandemic hit, the government toned down the discussion. But it seems the government has always been planning. There were warning signs, if only we were watchful enough. Why is the NIN so important, you ask? All things being equal, the NIN should help the government improve healthcare, security, welfare policies, and education. This data is also important to innovators, entrepreneurs, and for research and development. Ideally, every Nigeria should have this at bet. But like I've mentioned earlier, We've been failing at this. If you own a bank account in 2014, you should remember vividly the introduction of the BVN, the bank verification number, one of such important data that is used for financial innovation in Nigeria today. At the time of the launch, the BVN seemed like a duplication of effort, considering that the NIN, which the government kickstarted in 2007, should serve the same purpose. The communications minister has confirmed that the NIN will replace the BVN. For him, NIN is backed by law, while the BVN is just a banking policy. We need to replace BVN with our NI number. The reason is very clear. BVN is a bank policy, CBN policy, while national identification number is a law. It has been established by law. Your NIN is now composite to retrieve lost SIM cards, to get your driver's license, to get your international passport, or even to shop and flex on Amazon or AliExpress. Most parts of the N9 directive made sense, except for one critical factor, COVID-19. On February 27, 2020, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, confirmed Sub-Saharan Africa's first COVID-19 case in Lagos, Nigeria, and immediately assured Nigerians that it had put emergency measures in place to contain the spread quickly. Nigeria has confirmed its first case of coronavirus since its outbreak in China in January 2020. The Ministry of Health has confirmed a coronavirus disease case in Lagos. Nigerian officials say the confirmed case is an Italian national who works. The outcome was commendable. I mean, there were just 2,006 cases by the end of April 2020. You're probably asking yourself how much testing was being done then? How many Nigerians really had access to healthcare facilities? Are these numbers even real? Well, we're also asking the same questions too. A month before the NIN ultimatum, the NCDC's COVID-19 star had stopped attracting attention. The infection numbers were dropping and businesses were opening again. But in December, the numbers skyrocketed. The second wave was no longer a threat. It was now a reality in Nigeria. Throughout November 2020, Nigeria recorded 4,704 cases. But this number increased by 324% to 19,980 in December. By the end of January 2021, the country hit over 43,000 cases, a 115% increase from the preceding month. The numbers get even more disheartening when you consider the COVID-19 cases in the days following the government's NIN order. A month before Nigerians were asked to get their NIN, the nation recorded 9,000 914 COVID-19 cases, but a month after that order, it recorded a whooping 35,324 cases, a worrying 256% increase. 
The West African giant has seen a scary 74,304 cases in the 63 days following the commencement of N9 registration. 63 days before this, Nigeria had just 14,228 cases. In other words, COVID-19 cases have increased by 422% since the N9 registrations commenced. As I narrate this, possible logical flux that might arise from concluding confront me. When trying to escape the post hoc policy, we have to note that event B happening after event A does not mean event A caused event B. So, what else could be responsible for the spike in December 2020? Did the disease control agency begin to test more? Did people become more careless? Did careless parties begin? Whatever case you consider, there are only two possible outliers in the month of December 2020 and January 2021. The NIMSI registrations or the possibility that NCDC began to test more people. Every other factor, parties, crowded markets, protests, have all been going on before December. Government offices are now feeling the ripple effects. Offices that need the N9 connections complain of network issues, leaving several people waiting in queues. Also, people trying to retrieve their lost SIM cards complain about crowds and a complete disregard for social distancing. The NIN exercise might be a turning point in Nigeria's history, but at what cost? Will the spike in COVID-19 numbers be worth it? Or should Nigerians maintain their government distrust and disregard whatever COVID-19 numbers the NCDC publishes? Or maybe there's a false cause and this was always bound to happen.